You don't need a luxury kitchen to prepare gourmet meals. My name is Dennis. I live in a mobile home in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. I have been craving lately good fish and chips. Some former friends and I used to go down to the restaurants along the waterfront. We live on the Pacific Ocean here. And we tried a number of restaurants to see which ones had the best fish and chips. And then whenever we wanted fish and chips, that's where we would go. And I got to thinking this week, how difficult can it be to make it yourself? I can get the same fish that the restaurants buy. They're just going to get it from their suppliers. So why not just buy the fish and make it myself? I might be able to make it a little bit better because I think I can make it with a beer batter. I don't know if they use a beer batter. So that's what I want to do today is I want to make my own homemade fish and chips. But first, let's talk about the fish that you need to use. What I got was black cod. And if you look at the price on there, $66.19 for just over four pounds. Yes, it's expensive, but if you want good fish, you have to pay good money for it. You don't need four pounds. You really only need about Let's see, I would say one and a half pounds, 680 grams. I bought a lot so I could experiment with it. And these are the black cod fillets. They have them all wrapped in plastic. I have to take the skin off before I cook them. What you need is a sweet white fish. And I grew up in New England and we always used cod. Cod was what we had in the restaurants when we got fish and chips. North Atlantic cod is like the best cod, but you can't buy it anymore because the North Atlantic cod population collapsed in the 1990s due to overfishing. They now prohibit fishing, but here we are in 2013 and the population still hasn't recovered. So what I bought here was, this is probably something caught in the Pacific, obviously, because I live on the shore of the Pacific Ocean. So I'm going to use this cod. The guy in the fish store, the fish market, said that this is what the restaurants use in town. So I showed you the fish, but that can sit for a while in the refrigerator because that's going to be the quickest to cook. The first thing I need to work on is the potatoes for the french fries. Now I've heard of cooking potatoes twice when making french fries, but the recipe I'm following, which is one from America's Test Kitchen, uses three cookings of the potatoes. And what I'm using here is russets. I've got three of these. They're just, just under a pound each. You need about three pounds, 1.4 kilograms of russet potatoes. First thing I wanna do is square off my potatoes here a little bit. I was thinking about when I was doing this that there was a restaurant on the East Coast and whenever they made French fries they didn't peel their potatoes. They left the peel on and when I was a kid whenever my mom served baked potatoes I used to eat the skin. I liked the skin. Supposedly that's where the most nutrients are, but it's also supposedly where you will encounter the most possible insecticides. I'm not rounding these off, squaring these off rather, completely square, because I don't mind the corners and the edges of my potatoes being, my french fries rather, being a little rounded. Okay, the recipe that I'm working from says to cut these into half inch, that's about a half inch, 13 centimeters, half inch fries. So what is that? One, two, three, maybe four across this way. Cut it in half and then cut it in half again. By squaring them off, you at least are able to control the potatoes a little bit better. And then this way would be about thirds, like so. 
And those, of course, are long French fries. We're not making fettuccine fries. So I'm going to cut those in half. And there are my French fries. The next thing I need to do, oh, and by the way, some of these I left short and some of these I cut long. I'm just curious to see what they're going to be like to eat those different lengths. What I need to do is put about a quarter cup of oil. I'm going to be using corn oil. This looks like it's a dishwashing liquid bottle. It once was, but I use it for corn oil. This is to absorb the drips. So you want to put about a quarter cup or so of oil in there. That's about 60 milliliters, I believe. Yeah, and then just toss these around to coat them well with oil. Also to help get them separated up. If any pieces look really thick, like that one looks kind of thick, but I'm going to leave it. If any of these look really thick, you can cut them down thinner. All right, I'm going to rinse my hands and then cover this and microwave it. I'm going to cover this with plastic wrap. And if I need a vent, I might need a vent. I'm going to microwave these on high for about three minutes and then turn them over and then do it another three minutes and check them. They should be slightly limp, but have some resistance to them, slightly translucent. If they need to go another two minutes, I'll microwave them an additional two minutes. Here are my potatoes out of the microwave. I did go eight minutes on these because I know my microwave oven, it's old. It's like 30, 35 years old. It's not the big wattage like the newer ovens. This should have slight resistance, yes, when pierced with a fork, but they've gone slightly translucent. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer these to a colander that I have in the sink and I'm going to rinse them really well under cold running water. I lined a baking sheet with several layers of paper towels. That's a motorcycle going by. And I'm going to put my potatoes on there. Spread them out. Some of these may have overcooked a little bit in the microwave and therefore broke up. Like that one broke up pretty well. And then I'm just going to kind of pat these lightly with a paper towel to dry these. And you can let these sit for up to an hour at least 10 minutes, let them cool down. By partially cooking them, I'm assuming what I'm doing is I'm preventing them from turning brown, preventing them from oxidizing like potatoes will when they sit in the open air. All right, so those now are ready to set aside. I can start working on my batter for my fish. I have in a large bowl here one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. That's seven and a half ounces by weight or 213 grams. I'm going to be adding to that one half cup 2.2 ounces, 62 grams of cornstarch, two teaspoons of salt, one half teaspoon of paprika, and then one eighth of a teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. If you wanted to add some zing to this, you could add half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. That's optional. I don't like things too hot and spicy. Okay, so then I'm gonna whisk this together. Now, I wanna take out of this three quarters of a cup of this flour mixture. So where's my spoon? Right here. This is a one cup measure. I don't have to be precise. Three quarters of a cup. That looks like it's about three quarters of a cup. And I'm going to transfer this 
to a baking sheet. And then set this aside. Now returning back to my flour mixture, I'm going to add one teaspoon of baking powder to my remaining flour that it's in this bowl after I took out that three quarters of a cup and I'm going to whisk this together to combine it evenly. I am in the meantime heating oil in a large pot on the stove. You need about three quarts plus of oil. The original recipe called for peanut oil or canola oil. You can use corn oil. They all have a high smoke point of about 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 232 degrees Celsius. That's the point at which the oil starts to burn. I only need to heat the oil up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 177 degrees Celsius, well below the smoke point. While my oil is heating, I want to prepare my fish. I obviously don't want a huge piece of fish for my fish and chips, so I'm going to cut it up. But I also want to get rid of the skin. And to get rid of the skin, you need a really sharp knife. So you want to grab it at one end, and with a really sharp knife, kind of angle the knife and just cut right along the skin, holding it with your fingers, and keep moving your fingers up. And that'll cut right between the skin and the flesh. And if all went according to plan, there's my skinned fish. You can toss that aside. The other thing I want to do to get this into a more manageable size for eating is, let's see, I'm going to cut, I think, this piece at an angle, and that'll be one eating piece, and then I'm going to cut this lengthwise. This will be two more pieces. I have a little tray here set aside with parchment paper. So my oil, my oil now is up to 350 degrees. So I'm going to add my french fries, my potatoes. I'm going to bring my heat up to high because I'm going to need it on high. Just going to lower those in. I'm using my strainer to lower those in so I don't splash hot oil onto myself. And I want to cook these until they start to brown around the edges. That is boiling up awful high. I'm hoping that's not going to boil over onto my stove. I could have an oil fire on my hands very soon. That should settle down quickly enough. And I want to boil these for about six to eight minutes until they start to crisp up and brown a little bit around the edges. My fries now have been going for seven minutes. I'm going to remove my thermometer to get it out of the way while I pull these out. You can see they're just starting to brown around the edges, looking very nice. So I'm going to transfer these to my paper towel lined baking sheet here to drain. Gosh, those are looking so good. I can't wait to see what they taste like. This is the second cooking. They're going to be cooked actually a third time. And that's got them all. I've got one here in the bottom. It's funny, everything else floated, but that one stuck to the bottom. In the meantime, now I've patted my fish dry, and I'm going to dredge it in this flour mixture that I put on this baking sheet. I have in the meantime lined yet another baking sheet with paper towel. Shake all the excess off and then just let this... I'm using a wire rack because that'll help it to stay dry so that the moisture doesn't collect underneath it if it was sitting on a tray or a piece of parchment paper. 
I think I mentioned that I'm heating the oil up to 375 degrees Fahrenheit now, which is 191 degrees Celsius. And by the way, I'm not using all that fish, in case you think this is a small quantity of fish. I'm just going to cook a small amount. As I mentioned, I bought that fish to experiment with, so I have some other ideas. So now here is the remainder of my flour mixture to which I added that baking powder. And I have at last an opportunity to use the beer bottle that a friend of mine gave me. I live in a double wide mobile home in a trailer park and the name of the beer is Double Wide. And it says, relax, it's twisted proof. And there's a picture of an old single wide mobile home on there. He gave me this bottle to use in my videos. You need about 12 fluid ounces, one and a half cups, 355 milliliters of beer. Put most of it in there. And mix it together. It's okay if it's lumpy. Okay, and then I'm going to switch to my whisk here. And I'm going to add beer a little bit at a time until I get a nice batter that will stream off of my whisk and leave faint traces. I can probably go a little bit more beer. Yes, that's a plane going overhead. Yes, I do live near the airport. That nice pinkish color. Hopefully you can see that color. That's from the paprika. That's nice. Okay, it streams out and leaves just faint traces in the batter. Now, Returning to my tray that has the flour on it, I'm going to dip each piece of fish into the batter to coat both sides. You can use tongs for this if you want. And let most of the excess drip off. And then lay it on the flour and then just coat it well with the flour. And continue until all of the fish is coated. My oil now is just coming up. It's just over 375. It's about 380. I'm going to raise the temperature to high underneath it. And then very gently Lower those in, and I'm only going to cook about one or two at a time because I don't want to crowd this pan. You want to turn these once in a while. And you're going to cook these for about seven to eight minutes until they're nicely golden brown. Transfer them to a baking sheet lined with paper towels and then do another couple of fillets. While my fish is cooking, I need a smaller spoon. Uh, I can get it in there. I want to make my tartar sauce. And all the recipes I looked at pretty much said the same thing. To combine pickled relish with mayonnaise. If you want extra zing, you can put some cayenne pepper in there. Take a little taste of that. There it is. I'm going to add some salt to that, I think. I don't think it would benefit from maybe a quarter to a half a teaspoon of salt. 
So there are my last two pieces of fish, cooked beautifully golden. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Wonderful. Now, my oil is plenty hot enough. So now once again, I'm going to add my fries. Trying to do this carefully so I don't get any splash back. This is the third cooking on these fries. So now I want to fry these about three to five minutes until they're really golden and crisp and then we'll be ready to eat. Okay, so how I would plate this. I'm gonna get a piece of my fish. I got this beautiful rustic plate from a student ceramic sale. And then I want to put my french fries. Look how beautifully golden those are. Nice and golden brown. After I took these out of the oil, I salted them well. I can tell by the way they feel with the tongs that they're nice and crisp. Here is my tartar sauce. And if you like a tart tartar sauce, you can make, the, make it with dill pickle relish rather than sweet pickle relish. And then the only time I ever, ever use ketchup is on french fries. I don't like french fries. I don't like ketchup, rather. But I love it on french fries. So there it is. I want to see how that tastes. I'm going to take a little fork of my tartar sauce here. Some of my fish. Chris. Mmm, 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 Oh, that is so good. That cod is good. And my french fries. Crisp on the outside. Tender on the inside. Oh, those are good. Okay. <coughs> That's why I don't like ketchup. It's very tart. It's the, it's the vinegar in it. So excuse me, I'm going to go enjoy my fish and chips. As a postscript, I wanted to mention that if I were to do this again, I would not do the black cod fish. The reason why is it's not a firm white fish. It's a very soft, wet white fish. And after it's cooked, it releases a lot of juices, which turns that crisp coating into a soggy blanket. If I were to do this again, I would look for Alaska Pollock. The Pollock is closely related to the Atlantic Cod, so it sounds like it's an excellent fish. I did some research, and that's what a lot of the local restaurants use. They use Alaska Pollock.